The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 29th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question and you can't call in, Stevie has got your back. Send me an email. Send it off early if you can. And send it to steve at tfn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a mixed bag. The mix goes like this. The Dow's up 49 points, about one-tenth of a percent. S&P is up four points, less than one-tenth of a percent. NASDAQ 187 points. The upside, four-tenths. Russell's down six-tenths or 14 points. Semi's up seven-tenths or 40 points. Trendy's up uh, three-tenths. That'd be about 58 points to the upside. You've got gold that's trading up uh, right now, $25, just under 1% to the upside. That could mean, that could mean, uh, as we've been taught by our good friend, Mr. Z inside the Tiger's Den, that that 1% move in a day, that can be a place where you would see certainly at least a pit stop, if not some type of intraday high out there. Now, we'll take a look at the gold charts to see what they're doing on the intraday levels here in just a few moments. Silver is up 57 pennies. Natural gas is off 6 cents. Lights recruit down 10 pennies. 30-year Treasury down 20 ticks. He's printed out at the 117.01 level. Now, our leaders in the clubhouse, to the upside, dollar-wise, uh, $28 for Synopsis, about 6%. Cadence Design, 27 bucks or 10%. Gen Edics is up uh, 26 uh, bucks. That's a 46% move. MSCI is up $28, nearly 5% there. And Monolithic Power Systems, a $23 move, about 2.5%. Our shakers to the downside, led by Transmedics Group, a 38.39, 38-point move, 30%. Yikes. Boot Barn Holdings off 32 bucks, 20%. Double yikes. Checkpoint Software, 31 bucks, 15%. A little bit better, but that's a stinger. Install Building Products down 9, uh, 10%. $23 move in Crocs, the shoe company, off about 25 bucks. That's a 17%. So we've got some movers and shakers, most certainly. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Now, we've got day two of this rally that's going on as we speak. That was to be expected, be expected because the markets had moved into that oversold condition. If we take a look at the how is that calculated? Well, that's calculated by taking the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. If you're looking at my chart right now on Tiger TV or inside the Again, panel number one is price of the New York Stock Exchange. Panel number two is that advanced decline line, which made a new all-time high maybe about a week or two ago there. So good market breadth, most certainly. But the difference between those two exponential moving averages, once they get down that minus 150 level, right now we're at minus 153, we are in the oversold territory, which needs to be worked off out there. Now, what we can see here is, well, we'll just see how the day plays out. We're in oversold territory, so it bounces up. Uh, pretty normal. We also want to watch that spot fix index because price is still above that 50 day. The 50 day right now is printed out at 1855 and price is trade at 1941. So that's something worth watching out here. What else do we want to look at? Um, 
Well, let's let's do this first. Uh, because the, the first question, or the only, oh, I got three questions now. The first question that came in uh, was earlier this morning was from, uh, that, actually not that long ago, from Hector and Patty. And what Hector and Patty wanted me to do was to uh, take a look at, uh, they wanted to look at the chart that I have shown on occasion, which shows uh, gold and the dollar moving higher at the same time. So where did I place that chart? I placed that. Right here, gold, S&P, and the U.S. dollar index. So the top portion of the screen is U.S. dollar index. So what I put out here right now as we can speak, Hector and Patty, I've got this vertical line is the is the beginning of the year, January 24th out here. So we can see here the U.S. dollar index on, uh, on January 1st was trading at 102.12. Right now we're at 104.26. So it's been rising. We did drip down below that for a bit, but we got back above it on, uh, on uh, September the 30th out there. The second panel of the chart is the S&P 500. So so again, there's some that believe that the uh, dollar moves higher. The S&P 500 will move lower out here. Well, that's not the case. We know that. And we take a look at it. And if we take a look at gold, which is the bottom portion of the screen, it began the year at 2049.80. Obviously, right now we're at 27.79. Uh, that's using the continuous contract, so they've got a lot of data. So we've got gold moving higher, the S&P moving higher, and the U.S. dollar index also trading above the January highs out there. We can go back and find a number of other instances uh, of that. For example. Uh, and I don't want to really do that. Let's just stay right now in the uh, uh, in the positive. Not when I say in the positive with we, with regard to what's going on in 2024. But there are plenty of instances where gold moves higher, the S and P moves higher, and the Dow moves higher. In fact, they used to have a chart. I wonder where I put that. That went back and really detailed all this out uh, by a year out here. And I think it was done. This, these are the weekly time frame charts out there. But in any event, uh, so that's uh, what Hector and Patty wanted to see that. Um, and uh, let's go take a look. Let's stay with a gold theme out here. So we take a look at the gold theme. I don't even know what my PTRs say, my primary trading ranges. But if we take a look at gold right now on a weekly time frame, gold is up a key level, potential key level of resistance. And that's up at the 2785 level. So these horizontal lines that you're looking at, this is a weekly time frame. Uh, chart for gold. This is a continuous contract. This takes us back to 1996 time frame. And uh, these horizontal ranges typically will act as support or resistance. Not always, but you want to pay attention to them when they are forming. As an example, the largest number of uh, points of contact closes that is on a weekly time frame, whether it's an open or a close, is at the price point of 1284.80. There have been 91 uh, opens or closes at that price level. The second level it's at 1784.90. That's 44 opens or closes. Those two ranges set the primary trading ranges or horizontal trading ranges, whichever you like to refer to them as. I've also got diagonal levels out there. And so what this tells us, that uh, price were to close above the 2785 level on a weekly basis, we would likely see a rally up towards its next a rising uh, price channel line that's in the 3100 level or perhaps all the way up to 3285 that's its next weekly horizontal trading range boundary line out there so that's where take like by the way on the monthly chart the next uh, re potential resistance point is at 2865 on the daily time frame it's at 2865 as well so it's all right now about the 2785 level inside of gold how else do we want to take a look at gold well we want to take a look at gold I'm priced in the major currencies out there. What do you mean major currencies? I'm talking about U.S. dollar, euros, yen, pounds, corona, Canadian, loonie, Swiss franc, the Chinese yuan, and the Aussie dollar. When we take a look at it. We are. This is a daily time frame chart that we're looking at. We are new all-time highs today in each of these currencies. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. 
And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at this set of charts out here. This shows the uh, go how gold is trading in uh, major currencies out there. You can see we're at a new all-time high today in each of these currencies. What's the meaning of that? That just tells us gold is in a global rally out there. In fact, right now, we really don't have any sellers, if you will. Yes, we've backed off the highs just a tad, but that's really the, uh, that's really the uh, John Cheney 1% uh, uh, gold rule on that. So we're going to go take a look at gold here momentarily. Um, but if we take a look at gold priced in all of the uh, currencies that are all the primary currencies in the Middle East out here, we are also at new all-time highs today with every currency, with the exception being the shekel. We're close, but no cigar just yet out there seems to me like that's an indication that uh, things are not uh, over inside the Middle East. Boy, what's, what did I have to really stretch on that one out there? I don't think so. Uh, what else can we do when we take a look at gold? We can go switch over to Stevie's multi-panel time frame uh, charts out there. Now, that largest time frame on this set of charts is going to be the daily. That's in the upper left-hand side. If we just simply expand it out, we're watching for today. I believe it's 2722, but let me give you the exact number. It is 2772.60 out there, 2772.60. Close above that, we're 2771 right now. That will negate its uh, TD9 count and Rhodes Mentum Indicator top and suggest that we move higher. Now, uh, if we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, this bar that we're in right now is not going to complete until 2 p.m. Let's just make sure of that. Yes. And here, that also suggests that it closed above that 2772 level would negate its Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. And that would suggest that we move higher. If we take a look at the four-hour time frame chart, the bar that we're in right now, how about the last bar? The last bar closed at 10 a.m. and it negated its Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. So 10 a.m. chart it still has a signal, Rhodes Mentum Indicator signal. What that requires is a bearish reversal candle to confirm its ten intent to try to form a top out there. So right now, the uh, two-hour or the four-hour time frame chart has negated its uh, its topping pattern out there. Uh, so has the um, well, I take that back. The two-hour time frame chart, as we speak right now, yeah. 
The two hour time frame chart also negated its topping pattern. It even negated the TD9 count pattern that I didn't see earlier that had formed at two o'clock this morning. So that is bullish for gold. Looks like it's just taking a little bit of a timeout. So on that timeout sequence out here, you've got uh, Rhodesman indicator tops that are forming on the 30 minute time frame chart. Another nine minutes left in this trading session. That should take price back to 2770 or 2772. A close below 2770 would suggest to move back to 2760. 5510. That is where, on a 30 minute basis, a counter trend move to the downside would come to an end. I'm not telling you that price is going to get back there. I'm just letting you know if price did get back there, 2765.10, tested and rejected that level, that actually would be a short term buy signal out there. If price closes below that for the 30 minute time frame, tells you there's something else that's going on. On the 15 minute time frame, price right now is testing support. That's its oscillator and change line, only a close below that, which is really where we're trading right now around the 2776 even Steven level. That would then suggest to move back to 2770. So uh, longer term, things look pretty good, but it's really going to, at the end of the day, come down to the daily time frame chart. So just simply at day's end, watch 2772.60. If we close above that, the rally is likely to extend itself. Otherwise, we've just really traded up into resistance, and resistance would have held. Let's go to our first question. This is coming from... Um, John C. in the Tiger's Den, and they like to take a look at light sweet crude. So uh, let's do this here. Let's get back to my multi-set time frame charts. Now, here we've got daily, weekly, monthly, as well as several intraday time frame charts. So first of all, on a monthly time frame, with light sweet crude, it has been consolidating ever since uh, January of 2022. That consolidation range at the lows, about $63, and change out there, about 82 bucks to the upside. So that's a consolidation zone. On a weekly time frame, Price has pulled back, tested and rejected, 65.68. 65.68 is a TD9 count breakout level. Right now, we've got price that's trading on a weekly basis with inside its profiles out here. Support there at 66.65. But again, you got that real support at the breakout level, 65.68. On a daily time frame, we have an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Now, that one-to-one -one price extension would get you to 62.81. So that is what's in effect right now. No other uh, bottoming signal out here. Uh, but that 62.81 level would certainly take us below the breakout of 65.68. So, John, I would say the 62. 81 level is not going to come to fruition until price closes below that weekly support level at 65.68. The 30 minute time frame chart formed a TD9 count top. It did that at 730. Uh, this was at 730 uh, this morning. Can that be? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. TD9 count top. And right now, price is testing the breakout area at 67.23. Excuse me. So the next six minutes or no, or six, next six minutes or so, the price closes below 67.23 at 11.30. That's going to suggest lower price would be coming at us. I don't see any other bottoming signals on those intraday charts. Well, I take that back. The two-hour time, time frame chart is a TD9 count bottom pattern. That low out there is at the price point of 66.92. So a close below 66.92, that would definitely tell you about lower price out there and that the A to B equals CD pattern is likely to unfold. So that's what I see, John, when I take a look at lights recruit, if we look at consecutive days up and down, what do we have out here? Since the high that formed, the high that I'm referring to is one that came in on October the 8th. All we've seen are a uh, one, two bar rally to the upside out there. So that's an indication that, uh, to me, that's an indication that that A to B equals CD pattern is likely to form against 6281. But I've given you the other support levels to watch and observe on a further move lower. So, John, I hope that uh, answered your question. Steve is going to try to get that chart off the screen. And voila, we've got it there. Um, so thanks uh, for taking the time to write in, as always. Uh, Dan, inside the Tiger's Den, is helping out here. He's got really just one request, but he was talking about a couple different symbols out there. So we're going to take a look at uh, all of those, since I don't have many requests in the queue out here. So the first one is going to be CRDF. That's not the chart that we're on right now, but we'll get to that here momentarily. Okay, here we go. So we got CRDF, and uh, Dan, you were, nope, that's, yes, yeah, you were talking about, well, first, first let's take a look at the daily, let's look at it all. 
on a monthly time frame out here, you just start consolidating with inside its profile levels. 149 is support. This is bullish in structure. The center's at 368, and the top is at 642. On this chart here, this tells us that if we were to see a monthly close above 368, uh, because it's bullish structure and profile, odds would favor a push up to the top of that profile, 642. On a weekly time frame, you are trading right now above the top of its weekly profile. It's traded above it two weeks ago, closed back below it last week so i don't have really a confirmed uh profile change in trend signal out there but nonetheless a close above 288 is the first step on that process the second step would be a following close above profile resistance at 288 on the daily time frame let's open this up looks like maybe there was a sell the d point pattern there most certainly was that was confirmed with this bearish shooting star candle now price is trading into this on its daily time frame that candle had 1.6 million shares yesterday you did 689 shares the day before 574 today so far we're up with uh, 407,000 shares so you're moving into it with lighter volume but nonetheless you're above resistance so the price is likely to go target that uh, bearish shooting star high at 324. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Welcome back, folks. If we take a look at Cardiff Oncology, CDRF is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Its next intraday resistance point is up at 317. That's a 30-minute TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So that's what I've got on CRDF. Let's go take a look at the uh, next uh, request out here, IBRX. So let's pull that set of charts up on our screen, see what they are communicating to you and I. And right, oh, geez, I thought that I had done that. What did Stevie do? Well, we're going to put that in there right now. I had that in there twice, IBRX. So let's get this. This is, uh, by the way, this is Immunity Bio Inc. It's trading out right now at about 587 out here. Um, that's off of its uh, off of its high. So what do we have going on out here right now? So the first thing that we can see is that last week, price rallied nicely up into, and it's got a TD9 count bottom pattern. That TD9 count bottom pattern completed on September 20th. The low of that pattern is your key area of support. That's at 323. Forms that bottoming pattern, and then what happens is last week, price gets right up to its breakdown resistance level at 674. We've even tested it this week as well, and we backed off of that. So what you and I know here, Dan, about uh, IBRX is that 674 is your real key resistance level. The daily time frame had no topping signal as price got up to that level. So it's the weekly that's really the one that's controlling what this is doing. Now, the monthly time frame chart has traded into its bearish structured profile. That's between the range of 503 all the way up to 581 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at IBRX. We look at an intraday time period out here, like a 65 minute time frame chart. What do we see? We see a TD9 count top that was negated and a consolidation with inside its profile. The support area is at 476, the resistance up at 646. So that's IBRX. Let's go on to our next request out here or next symbol, and that's to take a look at uh, the TLT, and that is for uh, Jambalaya inside our Tiger's Den. Now, we'll take a look at the TLT, but we're first going to start with the 30-year Treasury. And the question was, is there any kind of bottom that we see? And the answer to that question is no. We are at bar number seven, uh, so we can't get a TD9 count bottom signal. Uh, earliest would be to, would be tomorrow. You need to have a spike below today's low, no matter what, in order for that to happen. There is a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal that is present, but that requires a bullish reversal candle. No bottoming signal on the weekly time frame either, so it looks like the 30-year Treasury wants to continue to move lower. Let's take a look at the uh, TLT charts out here, and even if we take a look at a uh, uh, just one more thing, if we take a look at the 30-minute uh, 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 treasury out here. I have no bottom signal on a 30-minute uh, time frame chart as well. So has the 30-year or the TLT bottom? Stevie's answer or the chart's answer is no. Let's go take a look at the TLT. TLT is showing us what? TLT is showing us that we're also in bar number seven. TLT is showing us that we need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom out there. We are, uh, so so uh, a, a bullish reversal candle confirms the Rhodes Mentum indicator signal. Tomorrow, you'd need to see a spike below. You need to see a combination of things, but at a minimum, you need to see a spike below today's low, whatever that is, the weekly time frame chart. We're below all support. Uh, we're inside, back inside the profile on the uh, monthly time frame. This would suggest that price might want to target the buy zone, 85.07 to 87.71. I'm not saying that because I would be making all my TLT decisions based on the patterns inside of the 30-year treasury out there. So uh, no bottom. I know that was your question, Jambalaya. I hope that answered it. And if you have any other questions, just please let me know, and we'll get those charts back up on our screen. Uh, let's go to our next request out here. Uh, this also uh, from uh, Dan NKTR Nectar out there. I don't know that that's really the ticker. So uh, that that's the name of the company. And matter of fact, it is Nectar Therapeutics. So what do we see when we take a look at this? Trading out at a buck thirty-one out here. Let's open up the daily time frame chart. Let's see what we see. And here, come on, what's going on? So we can see that price is really running the resistance at its TD9 count breakdown level, a buck forty-three. We did get one close above that. That was on October 17th, then boom, right back below there. We're trading back inside this profile, Dan, and that's up at 133. That's the top of the profile. We did close below two days ago and then got back above it yesterday. So it's really unclear. I think it's uncertain with regard to what its message is. But if we did have two days below 133, the message would be more clear, and we would see it move down to 124 or 113, 113 being the bottom of that daily profile. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, 
for Nectar Therapeutics. You are trading above the top of its profile out there, which is at 119, but it's lost its momentum as we speak, both last week and this week, as it's trading below that green oxygen change line. That opens up the door for a retracement back to 119 out there. Uh, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, a sideways move, basically dead money for the last uh, six months out there. Um, maybe it's just coiling and getting ready to uh, break out. So that's what I see when we take a look at Nectar, N-K-T-R, Nectar Therapeutics. Uh, Roger wrote in, and Roger would like to take a look at Dell. He's in Dell and would like to add. So let's uh, put the uh, Dell ticker symbol up here, see what it is doing. Get this. And Dell right now, what is this trading out at? D-E-L-L. -L. It's trading out at $120.81, which is within its daily profile. So this had formed a, a TD9 count top, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The TD9 count top went ahead and confirmed, completed on October 17th. The very next day, confirmed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The two tops make it better than one. I think four tops because I like their music, would make it better than one top. But uh, no, it doesn't really matter. One top is all that you need to identify the, what the intentions of the market are. Now what's taking place is price got all the way back. This was last week. Looks like maybe on uh, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday of last week, October 23rd, whatever day that was, price came all the way back and tested its buy zone of its daily profile. That buy zone is the range between 118.47 and 121.28. So you're consolidated with inside the profile. Um, support is held. If price gets back to support, which would be anywhere between 117.06 and 118.47, I would say that would be an area, Roger, where you could certainly add to your position. If price were to close below 117.06, I might consider taking the loss on the added position because that would be signaling lower price. But we're not there just yet. And I don't know that we're going to get there. However, the weekly chart says, well, you may get there, Stevie. And the reason is because this week is going to go ahead and complete a weekly TD9 count topping pattern. It was confirmed last week. This week it completes. And that suggests because we are trading below profile support on a weekly time frame that it wants to set its sights on 101.41. That is the level where it broke out from. Now, before we can get back to 101.41, it's got to take on 118.47 and 117.06 out there. Uh, in order to really suggest that it's not going to pay much attention to the weekly TD9 count top, you need to see a close above profile resistance. And that's up at 124.10. Two close above that would take us back to the uh, TD9 count roads meant to indicator top on a daily time frame as well as really on the weekly time frame. Now, on a monthly time frame out there, price is trading with inside its profile, Roger. That's between the level of support of 101.17 and resistance up at 157.26. However, for the last three months out here, price has remained above on a closing basis as oscillator and change line. So that's a relatively uh, bullish type signal out there as well, just a consolidation with inside profile. So, Roger, I hope that helps you out. We'll take a Google, which you wanted to, and maybe a few other MAG7 stocks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So uh, Roger had also asked me to take a look at the MAG7 stocks out here. Uh, we'll just simply start with the Qs. So the Qs have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Uh, the B point of its A to B equals CD pattern was on August 22nd. The volume there was 37 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with uh, 32 million shares. Passed again with um, 28, then 24. Where is that? Is it this far? 26. 25. Um, I probably need to look at my other chart out here. Nonetheless, there's an A to B equals CD pattern that is present. There is also a wave number seven top that is present that formed a couple of days ago. So if price takes out that high, which is 500.28, then we likely move higher. Now, there's a big resistance level at 503.28. That's the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. There's also its TD9 count top. And the TD9 count top is the real key area, and that's at the 503.52 area. Price is traded above its green oscillator and change line. It's traded above profile resistance. So a close above uh, the high from a couple of days ago, really a tick above the high from a couple of days ago, a tick above 500.28 would negate that uh, wave number seven top out there and suggest that we move to 503.28. That's the daily time frame. Let's take a look at the uh, MAG7 stocks. What do we have for Apple? In the case of Apple, we do not have a topping signal. Bar number five of its TD9 count was the high. That is does not qualify it as a, as a confirmed TD9 count top. TD9 count pattern, yes. And for that, we're able to identify breakout support, which is down at 224.83. Price is traded above profile resistance, continues to find uh, resistance also at its oscillator and change line at 233.68. And you've got... Uh, um, you don't have to worry about that nine account because that's not a topping signal. So close above 233.68 would get us up at least to suggest a test of that high from October 15th. That had volume of 64 million shares. We moved into it yesterday with 36 million shares. So far in the first, you know, two hours of trading, about 10 million shares. So lighter volume than that swing point high that has 64 million shares. Watch 233.67-ish for Apple. If you close above that, you're going to go revisit that all-time high. If we take a look at Microsoft, Microsoft is trading above profile and oscillator and change line resistance. Um, does it have a... I don't have it with an A to B equals CD pattern out there. So Microsoft is looking to Stevie like it wants to continue to rally out there. Google found resistance at its breakdown level at 169.38. We're trading at 170.38 right now. A close above 169.38 today is going to suggest a further rally for Google. We take a look at Amazon. Amazon is consolidating with inside its daily profile. The range there is between 186.96 at support and 191.77. To 194.17 is its a sell zone out there because of its bearish structured profile. NVIDIA, I'm going to come back to NVIDIA because Mohammed or Vic wanted to take a look at NVIDIA and he's looking for a buy point. So we'll take a look at the full NVIDIA stocks for that. Tesla, 
Tesla has um, negated its uh, TD9 count topping signals out there. So Tesla is looking uh, muy bueno, but it has found resistance. I've been assumed that's its all-time high. No, uh, yeah, it was. So where it struggled with is this swing point. So let's take a look at this. This is a Tom O'Brien, a special out here, and that is a swing point from July 11th. That swing point has volume of 221 million shares. The high of that swing point was, was it tested here too? No, was tested yesterday. And that was tested with 107 million shares. We're going into 221 million shares. That is a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. What would Tom say? If you can't bust them to the upside, you're going to bust them to the downside. Well, the downside here right now, in the case of Tesla, would have to be that first level of support. That's currently printing at 244, uh, 20, 244.24. But that uh, the, the pennies are going to, as price moves down, or should price move lower, which is signaling to us that it should, that number is going to change a bit. But nonetheless, we should see retracement towards the 244 area. That doesn't mean that it is a top, but just mean it couldn't break out of that, uh, couldn't break out that swing point high, and now price should move back to support, and that would be the first level of support on the daily time frame. Finally, let's take a look at Facebook. Facebook has a TD9 count top with a consolidation. We had found support at its breakout level. That's at 562.35. You're back inside its profile, but price has found resistance at its oscillator and change line. We're printing at, at 567.62. And 567.57 happens to be the oscillator unchange line out there. So watch that because if price closes above the oscillator unchanged line, you should make move to 596.11. What we don't see out here in any of these stocks is any kind of breakdown. Now let's move from here, and I'm gonna. It's gonna take just a moment for this to close up because I've got some weekly charts on the other side of my screens out there. We're not gonna go take a look at those. Instead, what we're gonna go do is for uh, Vic go take a look at Nvidia who's looking for a buy point. Now we're at the highs or near the highs out here, but nonetheless, let's go take a look at NVIDIA. I think that is on this chart. Yep, there we go. So the daily time frame, I believe we mentioned what? Did we mention a, a wave number seven top? I believe so, but if not, that needs a, a tick above 144.42. Now what Mohammed is, or what Vic is looking to do is he's looking for a buy point. And here's the problem with issue with providing you with a buy point just at this moment. And what that issue is, if you take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it has a TD9 count top. The high of that pattern is 140.76. We are trading right now above 140.76. We're trading at 140.35. The uh, this is the 29th, so that says it's Tuesday. On Thursday, um, if price closes above that, it negates that monthly TD9 count top. Uh, it would uh, also negate its weekly TD9 count top. And I'd rather see topping patterns fail and then for you to buy a retracement. Because we're up a resistance, these resistance levels could in fact hold. What would that mean? Well, that would mean out here that we should then pull back. Well, it means at least if they hold, if they hold. See, the problem with the weekly chart, even if it holds, it's still trading above profile and that's sort of change line resistance. So even though it's got that top, it would be a neutralized signal out there. But my suggestion here, Vic, you're, I believe you're already in it, or if you're not in it, even still, I don't want you to buy resistance. I'd rather see resistance fail, as I said initially, and then find some kind of pattern or support level on some type of retracement there. Otherwise, it's iffy here. You got tops on the daily, the weekly, and the monthly out there. So let's let this play out for the next couple of days. And why don't you reach back out to me on uh, Thursday, if you will, or we can certainly take a look at it on Monday as well. Uh, the last uh, request that I have so far, I believe, is from Mohammed, and he would like to take a look at ticker symbol RTX. And RTX right now is trading out at 123.56, and it's trading below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. That support level is 124.25. One close below that. Well, suggests that there's a crack in the ice. Two closes below that says there's a hole in the ice. And hole in the ice, well, that's a, you know, better than a hole in the head, but a hole in the ice says we move lower out there. Move lower on the daily time frame, RTX Muhammad would suggest to move back to 118.21. But before price can get down there, price would have to deal with the support level 119.48. That's the top of its weekly profile. Now, what you should notice about that weekly profile is it has a 
bearish structure. And we've been above that for more than two consecutive weeks. So if they move lower in RTX, it's only a counter trend move to the downside. It would or should find support between 117.38 and 119.48. Monthly chart is going to go ahead and complete a TD9 count top uh, on Thursday. On Wednesday, at the end of Wednesday. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at Wave Life Sciences. WVE is the ticker symbol. This thing has been a rocket ship. If we take a look at what Wave is doing. It's got some nice volume this month as it moves into a swing point. That swing point takes us back to uh, September 2020. That swing point did volume of 40 million shares, 40.5. We're already at, I believe, 43. We're at 43 million shares. So what that tells us here, dude, is that price should at least target that high. Don't know if it'll take that high out, that high being uh, 1998. So it ought to make a run up to 1998. That's the message coming from the monthly chart. Weekly time frame chart uh, tells us if we take a look back, it was going against a uh, swing point high that had formed out here on September 18th. That swing point did 7 million shares. Uh, two weeks ago, what did we do coming into it? Oh, jeez, what happened here? We did volume of uh, 25 million. Now I got to remember what was the volume back there. 25 million going into 7 million shares. So that tells us that high is likely to get tagged as well. There's no topping signals on the monthly, on the weekly, nor, but there is a topping signal that is forming. 
right now. What I mean by that is trigger the road's meant to indicator signal. And if a bearish reversal candle were to form, that would confirm that top. That price would have to close below 1437 in order to suggest a run to the 1281 level. But right now, just that signal, just a consolidation inside the daily time frame, both the weekly and the monthly, say they want higher price. Let's go to our final request out here. This is from Nicholas. He wants to take a look at SWKS out here. And he's looking to uh, take a long position in it. So when we take a look at this, first, what do we see out here? I don't see a bottom pattern on the monthly. I see a consolidation with inside the profile. I don't see a bottom pattern on the weekly. I see price trade below profile and a saucer and change line. And on the weekly time frame chart, um, I don't see a bottom unless there, maybe there's an A to B equal. Oh, I'm just trying to open this up here. Um, no, I don't even see an A to B equals CD pattern downside. I just see some consolidation going on here at this moment in time. So I don't see at this stage here the bottoming signal, Nicholas, that would take you into a long position. Folks, thanks so much for joining me today. Always great to be with you. Please stay tuned for all the other great programming we have. And uh, please join me again tomorrow at 11 a.m. sharp. Have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there. And we look forward to seeing you again soon.